Each year, approximately one million people immigrate to the United States. All are required to have a medical examination that includes tuberculosis screening. Screening for TB is particularly important since 65% of the new cases each year in the United States are among foreign-born people. As air travel and international exchange have expanded and grown, so has our thinking about the effects of migration on health. During this brief video, my colleagues will discuss how immigrant medical screening has evolved as our world has become more mobile, and how changes in this screening have affected the burden of TB in the United States. The results are exciting and challenging as they implore us to think more comprehensively about our approach to future migration health efforts in the U.S., as well as across the globe. To provide some background, I want to note that although TB incidence in the United States is low, about one-third of the world's population is infected with Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacteria that causes TB. This map of the world highlights countries by their TB incidence. The United States receives approximately one million new immigrants and refugees each year, and about one-third of them come from countries with high rates of TB. In this chart, you can see that the overall rates of TB in the United States have been declining after 2007, but that an increasing proportion of cases are among people born overseas. Note that our study focuses on changes made in 2008, which likely contributed to the decline in the number of cases after 2008. About half of U.S. applications for resident immigrant visas come from people already living in the United States under temporary student or worker visas. The other half are examined overseas by panel physicians. The impact of overseas screening was the focus of our study. Before 2007, our screening of U.S.-bound immigrants and refugees used smear-based microscopy to test for TB. In smear microscopy, a small sample of thick fluid from the lungs is placed on a glass slide. A stain is added and then the slide is examined under a microscope for signs of TB. However, there are many cases of TB which will not show up on a smear, but will appear using sputum culture testing, which tests to see if a fluid sample will grow TB mycobacteria. Our research demonstrated that most of the TB patients in our immigrant and refugee population who could be diagnosed by sputum culture had negative sputum smears. Also, a sputum smear cannot be used to find drug resistance. So we changed the algorithm to require sputum cultures, drug susceptibility testing on mycobacterium tuberculosis isolates, and directly observed therapy to treat patients to cure before they immigrate to the United States. To implement the program, we worked closely with U.S. consular sections, the panel physicians who were screening the immigrants overseas, the International Organization for Migration, the International Panel Physicians Association, and national TB programs to develop the resources for TB laboratories and TB treatment and to provide training to the panel physicians. We're very proud of this program as it highlights how strategic program implementation can have a strong public health impact. Further, this work has allowed host countries to be part of program development and to adopt the same diagnostic methods for their national TB control systems.